A slide. Sometimes if the holes are so big that they cannot sustain their weight, the weight of the overburden, they collapse. And sometimes the potters put their lives at risk. In some areas, the clay is, is filled with water and allowed to soak, absorbing as much water as possible in a process called slaking. They break the clay up into small chunks and place it in a mortar, and then pound it with a pestle to turn it into powder. They then sift the clay powder with the same sort of sieve that is used for preparing food. In another area of the compound, potters or their children may be smashing up old broken potsherds between two stones to produce a grainy material which is called grog. This is clay that has already been fired once, and so when it is fired again it will not shrink. The grog is added to the powdered clay and both are then kneaded together with water to produce the clay body that can be used for making pottery. Here you see one of the daughters of the family whose job it is to knead the clay by foot. She systematically circles kneading the clay and then adds new fresh powder and kneads again. Mrs. Konate is kneading grog into her fresh clay by hand. Among the Igbo peoples of southern Nigeria, the clay may be placed in a shallow trough and kneaded into a uniform mass using a pestle. The simplest and most obvious technique is simply to turn an old jar upside down on the ground and to use it as a mold for a new jar. Mrs. Konate in the village of Uri in central Burkina Faso has been making jars for decades. I first photographed her in 1983 and I've been going back to visit her from time to time ever since. The last time I visited her in 2010 she was getting very elderly and frail. She begins by forming a flat pancake of fresh clay and then she slaps it down over the mold jar. She uses a beater in her right hand to spread the fresh clay out over the mold jar, thinning it and spreading it. Mrs. Konate is the wife of a blacksmith, and you can hear the blacksmiths at work behind her. She uses a coil of fresh clay to form a ridge around the base and then shapes that with her fingers into a flat bottom that will support the pot 
when it is placed on the ground. When it is the right thickness and has covered the jar to its widest dimension, she carefully trims the lower edge to make it uniform and sets it aside to dry for a short period. She must be careful not to leave it for too long or it will cr begin to crack as it shrinks on the mold jar. When it is stiff enough so that it won't deform, she lifts it off, sometimes with the help of another woman in the compound. The concave mold technique is the first technique that I discovered when I first went to Africa as a Peace Corps volunteer. I had studied pottery in college, but I had never seen such an unusual and innovative technique. The potter has a shallow depression, or sometimes more than one, in the floor of her workshop, or even in the space she uses as a kitchen, so that she can go from work to cooking after washing her hands. The depression is only about an eighth of a sphere deep, yet she is able to use it to form a fully spherical jar. She kneads fresh clay into a thick round mass and places it in the mold. She then uses a mallet in her right hand to pound the fresh clay into the mold, thinning it and spreading it. Of course, she quickly fills up the shallow mold, and so she rotates the mass of fresh clay up on edge, exposing part of the shallow mold, and con continues to pound. She rotates and pounds, rotates and pounds, building the spherical jar larger and larger. From time to time, she stops and uses her fingers to consolidate the rough clay around the edge of the opening. Occ occasionally, when she discovers she has ran out of fresh clay, she adds a fresh coil around the rim and continues to pound and rotate. The technique produces a very thin, light, strong spherical jar.
she sets it upright in the mold and uses a coil of fresh clay around the opening to form the rim. At this point, the jar is almost complete and she is adding the coils to form the rim. She carefully